Welcome back to Taste for Adventure. Uh, we've got a authentic later hosen. That's There's a right. nip in the air. You know, I look like some kind of crazy <laughs> eco terrorist from Die Hard. That must mean one thing: September Fest. That's right. Am I saying that right? September Fest. Yeah, it's September Fest season. Right. right? Yeah. Is right. Well, we're talking about Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest, which happens in September. They come, yeah, you start seeing these the end of August, you know, beginning of September. The Oktoberfest yeah. is in September. Why, why is that? Why? So, uh, <laughs> that is the that's the question, right? Isn't like it? you can never if you're if you're in the mood for an Oktoberfest beer uh -huh. and it's getting close to Halloween, you are probably not going to find it on the show. Find a lot of pumpkin beers. You find a lot of pumpkin beers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in which case you might want to jump over to yeah, our other Yeah, we have a series show. for that. Yeah, um, but yeah, typically Oktoberfest beers you'll start seeing on the shelves in uh, late August through late September. So there's a very narrow window uh, in which you can purchase Oktoberfest beers, yeah. which is really, that was the reason we launched this channel. Is yes. We wanted to evaluate as many... Um, beers in a narrow window of release as possible to give you and us really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, started as kind of a selfish thing. Like I, I just want to buy <laughs> all the Oktoberfest beers to find out the best ones. Yeah. So next year, when I really want a good Oktoberfest, mm -hmm. I know exactly which one is good, yep. and I don't, you know, misfire and buy one that ends up not being so good. Of course. Um. So. Getting back to your question, why is it called Oktoberfest yeah. if you can only buy the beers in September, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in Germany, Oktoberfest started out in 1810 with the... It was actually a marriage celebration. I mean, it was like the best wedding reception mm. in history. I was going to say. Because it's still going on 200 years later. Yeah. Right? So, uh, right. Crown Prince Ludwig... Um, married Princess Therese von Schazen Hildberghausen in uh, Bavaria. And um, the very first Oktoberfest was a celebration of their wedding. Now, Congratulations. Yes, yeah. I mean, we should we should never not toast no. uh, Crown Pin Prince uh, Ludwig, I think, from now on. Because uh, yeah. he gave us the Oktoberfest celebration. This is right? a great celebration. Yeah. So, uh, but unlike modern uh, weddings, they didn't party after the nuptials. They actually partied in the weeks leading up to it. So, uh, okay. old, uh, old Ludwig uh, got married the first weekend in October, and it was a celebration leading up got to it. the wedding. Okay. So, um, I think it's called Oktoberfest... You know, I'm not a historian, so you can call me out in the comments or correct me or, you know, um, tell us, you know, maybe the, the true history if we're wrong. But I think that it's called Oktoberfest because the main event, the wedding of Crown Pins, Prince Ludwig, happened early October. And it's the celebration leading up to October. And I think that that has carried through to the modern era where it's called Oktoberfest. It's really kind of a celebration of the fall and it is, it happens in September as people prepare for the coming of fall. So you're going to have these beers in September and in October and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's why you have Oktoberfest celebrations yeah. happening in September. And in Germany, um, the celebration happens, uh, let's see here. Uh, in Munich, the fest lasts for 16 days, beginning on a Saturday in September, and always ending on the first Sunday in October. So, uh, there you go. It always yep. finishes out in early October, but it starts in September. That might explain why the later housing's so short. It's still kind of still warm enough to wear. Yeah, it. you 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 have to have before the you, breezy later hosen. Yeah. and uh, before you pull out the the winter later hosen. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, later hosen are uh, for those of you who might not know. Um, later hosen in German translates to leather pants, and okay. these are very uh, heavy, actually leather. You, even though they're short, they are very thick. Okay. Uh, and these are actually uh, my grandfather's, who is a German immigrant. Yeah. Um, so he gave me these later hosen. Very nice. And um, 
I mean, how can you not celebrate Oktoberfest, Septemberfest, yeah. without wearing lederhosen? The authentic German lederhosen. That's right. All right. Uh, and the ladies love it. In my <laughs> that's, that's what I've heard. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I think my fitting is uh, in the next couple of days here for mine. All right. Right. So um, we have a few um, Oktoberfest beers to yes, try, right? Yes, three. So uh, now that we've learned a little bit about the history, we can think about uh, maybe the types of flavors that old uh, King Ludwig had yeah. while we enjoy, uh, what, three beers? Well, so we have a, uh, a Surly. We have an Oktoberfest by Surly. Okay. I guess I can't really say whether or not the Oktoberfest beer itself is Surly, but okay. it's, it's by, by Surly. Very good. Uh, we have a uh, Riverlands Brewing, uh, Scarecrows in Lederhosen. Ah, very fitting. Uh, and then we have a Bitburger, which is our sort of authentic German offering uh, their fest beer. Yeah, and you know, Bitburger is not as well known as some of yeah. the other German imports, but uh, my grandfather, whose lederhosen I am wearing, um, always seemed to keep Bitburger in his fridge. So um, he must have been onto something. Yeah, and you know, as a home brewer early on, I would bring him the different like homebrewed IPAs and ales and things. I would, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to get his, you know, as a German. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember going to different Oktoberfest festivals and uh, parties that he would have. So later in life, I brought him some of my homebrewed beers, and and he would drink them and say. This is not an authentic German lager. Bring me a lager. I don't want these ales. So um, I got into <laughs> lager brewing uh, to appease my grandfather. Yeah. And uh, he, he has liked the, some of the, nice. German, the beers I brought. Good. So, um, and I, I just remember when I was picking out the beers for tonight's episode, uh, he always keeps Bitburger yeah. in his fridge. So I'm excited. Uh, maybe yeah. a little nostalgic to, well, uh, to try that too. I guess we'll... Uh... We'll see how that is. Uh, you know, thanks for sharing in the nostalgia. Oktoberfest. Yeah. Uh, pretty light golden in color. Mm -hmm. So uh, not I'm gonna very, go. Not very clear. No, not too clear. But uh, because of the color, I'm gonna go ahead and judge it as a fest beer. Okay. As opposed to a Marzen, which is the other Oktoberfest style. That's right. And uh, the Marzens are going to be more amber, mm -hmm. uh, more kind of caramel colored, yeah. uh, versus the uh, golden range that a fest beer has. Yep. So what are some of the aromas that you're getting here in the Surly? I've got, I've got that kind of archetypal bread crust, bread, you know, bread kind of dough. Yep. Um, I think dough is big. Dough I'm, I'm is, getting yeah. a lot of like... More, more dough than actual crust. Yeah, think of like after you've you've kneaded a whole bunch of bread and then it's, it's rising, but before you put it in yep. the oven, that really like yeasty bread dough richness is is what i'm getting off the aroma yeah it's definitely more bready in the mouth okay i would say it's a teeny tiny bite i think of hop in there it's not it's not hoppy at all by by any metric but there's there's more uh hops in this than in some of the beers that i've had in the fest beer kind of yeah, and it's it's kind of more of a, a back end like balancing bitterness than yes. it is in the flavor. Yes. I'm I'm yes, really yes, yes. not getting any nope. hop, you know, spicy herbal floor. Enough, no, not, no not any hop upfront flavor. bitterness or anything like that. Yeah, it's really just the back end to uh, to yeah. to dry it out and and kind of finish the beer off. Yep. Yeah. This is nice. This is good beer. Yeah. Good on you, Surly. Uh, yeah, very crisp, clean flavor, uh, grainy, doughy. It has that like, real like early like grain dough uh, yes, flavors. Yes, yes. Um, good level of bitterness, maybe a tiny bit of spicy hop flavor. Now that I've had a couple of yeah. sips, I said it wasn't very clear, uh, but maybe it's just uh, you know it's kind of a cold. It's really cold actually, but looking at it from the top, it's pretty decently clear. Nice head retention for yeah. sure. I don't think I. I don't think it's it's opaque or hazy enough to knock it on appearance. Right. I give it full marks for appearance. Yeah. It is not quite as like crystal clear as some examples of the style, but it's still not not bad. No, not at all. 
Yeah, mouth feels good. Really uh, nice. It's good medium mouthfeel, medium carbonation with a little bit of that creaminess. Yeah. yeah, I like this a lot. Very, very clean, very crisp. I like that. Yeah. I like that in a fest beer. So, overall, um, I scored it a 41 out of 50. That's a great score. Yeah, very good American craft interpretation of a classic German style. Um, it might lack some of that, like, depth of continental, like, European malt quality to it, but everything else is there. I mean, it's, um, it, I, I would say that it is definitely a, a tiny step below, like, the German import fest beers. Sure. But it stands tall with the very, very best of the American craft fest beers that I've had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there are definitely some that I could compare it to in that fest beer category. Yeah. That this really, I mean, it, this, this really stands above. Yeah, so absolutely. Very happy with this one. Yeah. Very nice. Nice job, Surly. Good this job. is a very nice fest beer. So what do we have next? Next up, we've got a uh, Riverlands Brewing uh, Scarecrows in Lederhosen. All right, a uh, beer after my own Lederhosen. There you are. All right, Scarecrows in Lederhosen. Yes. Um, so aroma. Um, again, I'm getting maybe not as much dough, but I'm getting like a lot of like yeah. white bread yeah, in definitely. this one. Um, very like Definitely light, different, yeah. like a like a French bread, like a very pale like bread. No toast or caramel. No. Um, now this one is, this one's definitely more on the hazy side. You can't see through this at all. Yes, that one. This one's a bit hazier, and I don't know if, if this is going to be a Fesbier or Marzen. It's kind of right in between. Mm. It would be a very dark Fesbier or kind of a lighter Marzen. You know, this is good. The last one was good. You know, I have no doubt that, you know, especially with the with the authentic German offering, we're going to have a good beer. This is another good beer. There's a lot of good beers in the Fesbier, Oktoberfest, Marzen category. Yeah, and I, I think that, um, I mean, that's just such a nice area to, to operate and to brew in. And, yeah. and, and they're so easy for both craft beer drinkers to appreciate yep. and people that you know aren't really f too familiar to uh with craft beer to enjoy yeah. if you're not into big imperial stouts if you're not into bourbon age beers if you're not into really hoppy beers i think that the oktoberfest beers is something that everybody can enjoy because it doesn't have those things yeah but when they're well made oh, yeah. oh my gosh yeah. And they're great by themselves. Mm -hmm. They're great with food. They're just a fantastic category yep. of beers for um, an experienced and a novice uh, craft beer drinker. Yeah. Well, I think you hit the nail right on the head because there are so many of those people who are into those big, bombastic styles. You know, they're like, they're like oh, I love a, you know, triple IPA kind of thing. Yeah, or I yeah. love a Russian Imperial Stout, you know, it's a 45% alcohol beer <laughs> or whatever. But, you know, there's there's definitely a market for um, for the Oktoberfest, you know, for the for the, the more, I don't, I don't even really want to say neutral because it's got its own sort of flavor offering. Yes. Yeah. You know, this is a really nice drinkable beer, you know. This is, this is a great beer for when you don't want to, you know, Blackout on, uh, you know, uh, bourbon porters, you know? <laughs> That's right. Which, I mean, I can't imagine not wanting to do that. But. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, so another another really good beer. Yep. Um, I judged this one a 39. Yeah. So uh, right I barely there. noticed you turned the page. <laughs> yeah, excellent beer. Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, nice job. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Scarecrow's and Later, Jose. There you go. Thumbs Very up. nice. Yeah. Well, let's round it out with uh, the authentic, the Bitburger Fest beer. Now, you say your your grandpa just always had this in his fridge. Yeah, and it wasn't necessarily uh, the Bitburger Oktoberfest, of but he would usually have like the Bitburger lager, light lager, yeah. or whatever. So, um, always feel a little bit of nostalgia for uh, Bitburger, and it really excited to try mm -hmm. uh, try this beer from them. Yeah. Well, let's see if he was onto something. All right. <laughs> Here we have the Bit Burger. All right, so that's a uh, nice kind of a deep golden, probably on the darker end of the scale for a yeah. uh, fest beer, but still. 
Did I get a little bit of spice note when I smelled that or Let's no? See here. Yeah. I get sp like spice and herbal, but not yeah. really any floral. No, 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 no. Um, I feel like at this point I've smelled so many fest beers. My nose is like, all right, we get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gone. I was like, I was like, my nose is on the fritz. I get, um, I get bread and like, uh, like yeah. a cracker, like a saltine type cracker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, aroma with uh, definitely a little bit of spice hop. Mm -hmm. You really get the cracker when you taste it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you absolutely do. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, not as much on like the bready yep. into toasty quality, right. yep. but the malt flavor that is there is really, yep. I think, authentic. Yeah. Yeah. No, no real, um, no real hop bitterness or anything that, but it's definitely balanced pretty well. I mean, it's not overly, it's not really sweet at all. I mean, there might be a little bit of. Yeah that there but I mean it's balanced out really well with the hops that's a good point like it's it, it finishes crisp but not bitter and definitely yes. not dry right um, so I think this is a beer that um, is extremely well attenuated but they didn't use a ton of hops in there nope. um, and it's just it's it's nicely yep. balanced and a little bit on the more like lighter malt crackery side of yep. malt flavors and, and really nice. Yeah. Well, I'd say when you've been around for over 200 years, you kind of know what you're doing by then, I hope. Yeah. And now this one is squarely in the fest beer category. I feel like if you call your beer the fest beer, yeah, you're pretty much uh, you're pretty much asking to be judged as a fest beer. Yeah, it, it definitely um, is not going into the like the toastier dark bread crust nope. flavors of nope. a Marzen. Um, it's more like that white bread, dough, cracker, uh, flavors that pills malts um, that mostly make up uh, fest beers yeah. are going to give you. Mouthfeel, I, I still think it's fairly creamy. Oh, yeah. Um, medium body, medium carbonation. So uh, I think it's right there in the zone. Oh, yeah. Um, now, compared to other German... Uh, Oktoberfest beers, well, Fest beers in Marzen, I think this might be a little step behind. I okay. mean, the other ones have absolutely knocked my, <laughs> your, your my long, long socks, socks off. off. But, uh, you know, I, I think this one is very, very good. Oh, yeah. And it, it could stand up to any American craft uh, Oktoberfest type mm -hmm. beer. But I, I don't think it's it's quite up to the level of, say, like a uh, wine Stefan or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although it's hard to, kind of hard to beat a thousand year old brewery. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred's pretty good, but yeah, yeah. Um, re this is a really nice fest beer, though. It is. This is really good. You know, I I would not turn my nose up at this if I were at a uh, German festival wearing authentic lederhosen. You know. I mean, if I'm at a German festival wearing authentic lederhosen, as I often find myself, of course, of course. Um, I'm I'm. I'm going to tend to order a German yeah, Oktoberfest, either uh -huh. a Marzen or a Fest beer. Of course. Unless it's a local beer fest. You know, if I'm if I'm in, you know, any town USA, yep. and that town's brewery or that town features their town brewery, I'm absolutely going to have that town's brewery. Of course. Uh, their uh, Oktoberfest offering. But then I will probably also not be able to leave without ordering some of the, you know, one of the German kegs as well. No. And I feel like that's kind of the the enjoyment of craft beer. I think that's kind of the heart of this channel is trying out those really new and, or maybe not even necessarily new, but really just getting down to all of, there's so much beer. There's more beer than I think anybody could drink ever, you know, in all different kinds of styles and all different kinds of, you know local breweries and global breweries and old breweries new breweries there's so much there's a lot a lot of beer to drink you know more than you ever really could you know it's uh it's exciting it's an adventure you know it's, it is it's the, really the heart of this channel is just getting out there and just trying all of these new beers all, all all of these beers you know stuff that you haven't tried before yeah so 
Very nice. Absolutely. And I don't think I've ever tried the uh, the Bitburger nope. Fest beer before. And I'm, I'm glad I'm tasting it. Yeah, yeah, I am too. All right, well, we've come to the end of our three beers, our flight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of... I don't know. I'm at a crossroads. Like yeah. I think all three beers were really, really good, but it's hard for me to rank them. Uh, what would you say? You know, they're they're all they're all pretty similar. You know, really. I mean, I I feel like on a you know any any other day of the week, I might rate these. You know, like okay, well, this one's here, this one's here. You yeah, know, it like, just depends on kind of how you're just feeling. Kind of yeah. I mean, like nothing. You know. So yeah. let's go back to your your classic metric is is what would you go back how many and, <laughs> and order another one up? So yeah. it, there's a there's a beer tent. There's yeah. an Oktoberfest tent. Yeah. You know you got the you got the, you got uh, the beer pouring ladies. Um, you've had the only three beers on offer that ha that okay. they have offered, okay. and it is the Bitburger Fest beer, the Scarecrows and Later Hosen, and the Surly yeah. Oktoberfest. Yeah. So you've had one of each. Yeah. And you're going to have one more before you go home for the night. Oh. What yeah. is the one you're going to get an order, an order another of? I, I liked the Surly. Surly Surly actually came out and surprised me a lot. It was okay. Very, I liked it. I thought it was good. It All was right. good beer. So what, what, what would you say for you? It's so hard. I know. I, I know. Uh, I was like, yeah. And like I said, any like any other time, you know, I'm, I'm you know, go to the festival and you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. I might, you know. Yeah, you might. You're right. Just get one, you know. These three were all yeah. so similar. Yeah, and I'm I'm right there with you. Um, for me, I would probably maybe bat my eyelashes at the server a little bit and uh, and say, uh, you know, bring me what your favorite is because uh, I, so I'm gonna punt. I'm gonna defer. Okay. okay. Because uh, they're all three really good, yep. and I think a, a great part of uh, enjoying beer at festivals and but just in general is is sharing experiences with others yes. and uh, you know enjoying what other people recommend so I would sure. I, if I had all three and I was gonna order one more before I left yeah I would ask I would say dealer's choice yeah I would ask the bartender I would ask the server to uh, to pick for me because they're that close for me yeah, might as well uh, might as well let the pretty blonde girl bring you another beer. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. All right, well, uh, this has been another really great episode of Taste say, Adventure. Of so uh, thanks as always for uh, for joining me here. Yeah, check out our whole series on uh, fest beers. We got Marzins, we got Oktoberfests. A little mixture of both of them, a couple episodes like that. That's right. Uh, yeah, so we have a whole playlist on Oktoberfest beers, both Fest beers and Marzins. And uh, look for our other playlists and the rest of our uh, videos on our channel as well. Yeah, and cheers. All right, cheers to King Ludwig. Ki King to King Ludwig. That's right. All right. <laughs>